Welcome to the call and welcome to our teams. Um, tonight we are going to throw a lot of information at you, but know that while this might be a little bit overwhelming, you can always come back over recorded and stuff, but also we don't expect you to remember all of this. Um, this is just going to help you set a good foundation and we will continue to be there to help mentor you, use the team pages, all those things. But um, we want to make sure we're helping you get started on the right foot. So um, first I'll tell you a little bit about us. My name is Ashley Molstead. Um, this is Leticia Dominguez. Um, we are both elite coaches and we were total strangers um, before, well what, like two years ago, really, two, maybe three years ago. Um, and this business brought us together and now we're best friends which is just another huge perk of this business, the amazing people that it brings into your life. We both were working full time prior to Beachbody and about a year and a half in or so, we both ended up um, firing our bosses, coming home and being our own bosses. And now we both do it full time in our six figure earners. So um, some of the things we're gonna go over with you tonight will help you set the foundation for building your own business and maybe it's not your goal to ever leave your job or to make six figures but whatever your goal is this is still how you're going to do it so um the first thing that we want to cover is you're a coach now what do you do um there is like i said gonna be a lot of info in this call but i want you to remember no matter what no matter what level of where you are at in your business, um, what you have going on, how, you know, maybe you're three years in, it is still, Leticia and I, three years in, our number one job is to take care of ourselves. And that is your number one job as well. And so you have to commit to your program, commit to drinking Shakeology, commit to getting, you know, we're going to cover the vital behaviors, but you have to be a proof that the products work and not only do you have to be proof that the products work, but you have to love the products because if you don't love the products and you're not using them, then you're just a salesperson asking people to do it with you. And I think it's a really awesome thing that it is literally our jobs to work on ourselves. So start on your, you know, workout program, whatever it is that you're signed up with, start on that program, do it start to finish, make sure you're getting your shake in every single day. Feed your brain with personal development and work on becoming your best you because if you don't love and use the products, you won't be able to share that passion with other people and get them to join you and get them to use and love the product. So um, with all the information we're giving you, just remember that your number one job today, six months from now, a year from now, three years from now is always going to be to take care of you first and be really committed to becoming your best self so that you can then inspire other people to become their best selves. And now we're gonna get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty. All right, okay, cool. Yay, so welcome everybody. Um, so like Ashley said, there's gonna be a lot of information, so try your best not to feel overwhelmed, which you probably will, but um, you will hear this information over and over and over and over again from now to the end of time. So there's no need to stress about it. So first let's get into our four vital behaviors that we have as coaches. So like Ashley said, the number one priority as coaches is to take care of ourselves because we can't help anybody else if we can't help ourselves first. So that's first and foremost always. So the number one vital behavior is invite. And I honestly feel like it should say share, 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 invite. So the more you share what you're doing on your social media and you share in a, just a genuine way, the more you're going to get people to reach out and ask what it is that you're doing. They're going to start to know um, that you are on your own journey and that you are rocking the program and that you are seeing results and seeing progress, but they will only know if you document everything that you're doing. So that is our number one the vital behavior is to be sharing and then to be inviting to this opportunity. When people do reach out and ask, what the heck are you doing? How do you look so awesome? How do you, you know, lose X amount of, of pounds? That's whenever you go into the invite and then invite them on their journey with us too. The second one is be proved the products work. So that goes right along with what we said that our number one job is to take care of ourselves because if we're taking care of ourselves, if we're using the products, if we're using Shakeology, if we're, um, you know, just rocking what we're supposed to be doing, then the rest kind of falls into place. But it starts with that. It starts with um, just being like a rock star challenger and going through the whole challenger experience, getting your workouts in, being Shakeology in, 
And number three is personal development. And you're going to hear that so, so much, especially for Ashley and I, that's a huge one. I always say that I think the biggest blessing of this business has been for me has been personal development because I am not the same person I was almost four years ago. Like, sure, we have a six figure, you know, business now. Sure, I was able to leave my teacher job. Like, sure, I have the freedom. But I think what I'm most blessed and grateful for from Beachbody is that I was forced to do personal development and that changed me tremendously just mentally and emotionally I am just in a whole new different place and just a whole new different person and you guys you can't help anybody if you don't help yourself first and we all have things that we need to work on we all have quote baggage or just things that we need to improve on um, so fueling your mind exercising your mind every single day with positivity is a must especially in this business because you will get told no a lot um, you are going to be putting yourself out there a lot you are going to be doing things that are out of your comfort zone you are going to be doing things that you probably never thought you would be doing so that's when personal development comes in because you're going to need that courage you're going to need just all that positivity in your mind every single day and then you can be a better coach a better mom a better wife a better everything if you are working on yourself mentally so personal development i've heard this in a few calls before whenever top coaches get asked you know what is your number one tip and they a lot of them have said if i can give you one tip it would be to focus on personal development i have heard that so many times you have to grow your mind like our businesses is never going to outgrow us so, you know, if you're doing this much personal development, well, that's how much your business is growing. If you're doing this, so, you know, your business will never outgrow how much you're growing mentally and emotionally, which is why it's so, so crucial. And hopefully you should all be reading a book now already. If not, then we would definitely recommend more once you get plugged into the coach trainings. And the last one is recognition. So once you become a coach um, and you start to get challengers, you know, just people who want to go on this journey with you, like family members and friends, you know, it's so important to recognize them in the groups, recognize them privately, um, and then, or, you know, just other challengers in your group, other coaches in the group, if you see them rocking it or you see them struggling, like just always lend a hand, always recognize, because it's just so nice to be praised for things that we're doing and notice for that so that's one that we just added because i feel like it is a huge part of what we do is to uplift others um, especially whenever they need it or even if they're just doing a great job like who doesn't like to hear you know get recognized okay the next thing that is super super crucial in this business is stay connected you guys i know for me that was a huge one in the beginning because you do feel kind of alone right you feel like you see all these other coaches who've been in it for a long time they already have their friendships or whatever and then you come in and you're like um so you feel first like lost and then kind of alone and then you probably feel like i'm the only new one i'm the only one who doesn't understand what's going on which you're not the only one so I think staying connected, staying plugged in, in into what's going on, tuning into these calls and just trying to participate in everything that you can, which I know it's impossible. You can't participate in everything, but the more connected you are, the more you're going to feel like you're a part of something and you're going to feel just more, you know, just bonded more with everybody, the sense of community. I think that was so, so huge. So always reach out to just your upline, but mainly just stay plugged in the group, know what's going on, stay in the know. That's a huge one for me because I just think it's always so funny how we can talk about like something for weeks and then someone will like message me, what, what is Team Cup? And I'm like, we've been talking about it for like weeks. So just like, I think it just makes you feel good too, just staying in the know and knowing what's going on. But that's what makes you feel more connected. So tune in to, we have national wake up calls every single Monday. They are live, they're 8 a.m. Pacific and uh, 10 a.m. Central. If you can tune in and live, I think that's, that's, that's awesome and you sh should try because I think there's, this, there's, a, there's something magical about tuning in live. I think you pay more attention, but they're always recorded. Almost everything we do is always recorded, but just try to tune in live the most that you can. And then, you know, where do you find info? So the Coach Online Office is where you can find a lot of information about what's going on, like, sales and things that are happening in the beach body world again just staying in the know Google and YouTube you guys would be your best friends if there's a question that you have odds are someone's already asked it and Google and YouTube probably have the answers and if you can't find it there then ask in whatever groups that you're in um, what else 
Yeah, and that's it. And just, you know, our goal is to help you become as independent as quickly as possible. Like we're here to help you for sure. Um, but I think there's some magic also in going and trying to find answers for yourself, getting lost in YouTube, getting lost in, in Google. Um, I know when I was a teacher, my little ones, the ones that, you know, learn how to whatever, write their names first, learn how to try the, the, tie their shoes first, the ones that learn how to become more independent first, I felt like they had more success and they were just able to learn quicker or whatever. So it just kind of like the same rules apply. Okay. So one huge uh, question we get a lot from new coaches is when should we start sharing? You start sharing now, you know, you don't wait until you know everything. You don't wait until you hit your goal weight because I think no one ever hits their goal weight. Um, because once you hit that, then you want more and more and more. Um, you don't wait until you have a, a transformation. You don't wait until you have a page. You just start to share now. You take people on the journey with you. So if you haven't already, you should already be talking on your social media about what it is that you're doing. And you don't have to be like, you guys, I'm a coach now, buy from me. No, you just share that you are in a supportive boot camp group, that you're rocking this program and that you're loving it. And then every day you document on your social media what it is that you're doing. People will notice what you're doing. People will start to watch you and, you know, get curious about what it is that you're doing. But you start sharing now. You know, you'll never have all the answers. You'll never know every, every ingredient in Shakeology. You'll never, and that stuff doesn't matter, honestly. What matters is that you just genuinely share what you're doing on social media. And with time, people are going to start to reach out to you. But if you don't ever put it out there, then, you know, people won't know what you're doing. So, yeah, and then people want to see your journey. I think it is so empowering. I know there's a few people on Instagram that I, you know, whenever you start to follow someone and you see when they start their journey and you kind of feel like you're going on the journey with them. And then you see them like share whatever progress you're like, oh man, you almost feel like a part of that, right? Because they took you on the journey with them. So the same thing with us, you guys, the more that we can take people on the journey with us and share our experiences and the good and the bad, you know, the crappy days when we don't want to work out or just the crappy days where whatever we feel, we just don't feel it. Like, you know, we share the good, the bad and the ugly, and we take people on their journey with us. And I, that's just the most genuine way to share this and bring people on board with us. Okay, my turn. Um, I am going to now uh, tell you where should where you should be spending your time because, like we mentioned, if you are overwhelmed, you're normal. Um, everyone feels overwhelmed when they first start coaching because there's so much information to know. But I want to just focus or help you focus your energy on um, just a couple things because if you focus your energy on just these things, it will help you be successful. And I think, you know, it's tempting to want to know everything, but really, like we mentioned, your number one priority is to focus on your own personal fitness. So do your workout and drink your shake. And then we are going to help you a little bit with social media here. Um, but social media is a really big topic for us. So there's more training outside of this. But it's really just also about sharing your journey, so documenting it. And I think it should be your goal to post on social media a minimum of three times a day. And that might sound like a lot at first, and it might sound a little bit like a drag, but in the beginning, um, when I started this, and I'm sure it was the same for Leticia, it was really hard. I was always thinking about like, okay, what do I post now? Um, and I, my brain was always thinking about posting. And now it's just, it was almost like I was learning a new language. And now it's just innate. It's a part of me. I take pictures all day long. I think just content is just always there. But in the beginning, it is going to take a little bit of like growing pains and figuring it out. But if you can make your goal to post three times a day on social media, and some of that is going to be, at least one of those should be about your workout, um, somehow documenting your journey and letting people know, you know, that how you're feeling about it. Sometimes it sucks and sometimes it's amazing. And sometimes you're totally on point and sometimes you're totally fell off and like ate a whole pizza or whatever it is. You just share your journey and it is not about selling anything. It is about sharing authentically um, your story about whatever it is that you're going through that day. So your first priority is to focus on you. Your second priority is to um, put up content and kind of share your journey. And then I feel like your third priority, team calls should be, I should reorder this, but personal development 
should be something that you focus on as well. And in the beginning, it's just 10 minutes a day. Um, I think that it's something that, like my whole first year in this business, I didn't do personal development. And I, that was like, technically I started coaching in 2013, but I didn't do any personal development. That was when I was in, if you know my story, I was in my deepest depression. And so I really kind of count my start to coaching in 2014. And that was when I also committed that my resolution that year was 10 minutes a day of personal development. And my whole life changed. My business changed, of course, but my whole life changed in my head. It, like the same way that our workouts are fitness for our body, the personal development is fitness for your mind. You have to keep your mind in check. And so if you don't grow your mind, you will not grow a business. And it's 10 minutes a day. At, and in the beginning, what I had to do was when I would crawl in bed, you know, and that's usually when I would scroll through social media. And instead of doing that, I started with 10 minutes of reading whatever book that I was reading. And then after that, I would then allow myself to do social media, but now I crave it. And I get in at least, I know Letty and I both probably get in a minimum of an hour a day because I try to squeeze it in wherever I can. It makes me feel so good. But in the beginning, all you have to do is 10 minutes um, a day. And then the other place to focus your time is in the team page and attending team calls. We host them. We have like team wide calls every Tuesday night, um, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Again, as Letty mentioned, we record everything, but there is something different about being on live. And so if you can make it to those calls, um, really try to make that a priority because you will get a lot of information from them. You'll get inspiration. And this business can feel a little bit lonely because you're doing it on your own. And maybe the people around you think you're crazy or, you know, they're not doing it with you. But if you hop in to the team calls and stay plugged into the team page, you have a community around you um, of people that are, you know, supporting you and inspiring you and lifting you up and all those things. So, um, this is really where you should be spending the bulk of your time. Everything else, like extra training and things like that, you can layer in. But remember that at this bottom piece here, resources are incredible. YouTube and Google and coach, you know, your coach online office, all those are incredible. But if you don't focus on the vital behaviors and you don't nail those things, then it doesn't matter how much you know if you're not actually doing the things that matter. And the top part here is the things that matter where you should be spending your time. If you have extra time on top of that, then you layer other things in, other trainings and stuff like that. But just take it one day and one thing at a time. Um, okay, now speaking of the groups, our team pages. So I'm gonna take you to our team page really quick. So, um, over on, on Facebook, over on the left, they have now created something called shortcuts where you can edit this and like take things out. You can pin them to the top or sort, sort it automatically or hide it from your shortcuts. Um, but your team page should be like any challenge groups that you're in. And I have my Foodie Girl Fitness page up here as well. So if you open a public page, you know, put that up here and your team page. So mine is called the Follow Your Bliss Family, um, and you'll be added to either Team Living Fit or the Follow Your Bliss Family, and you want to make sure your notifications are turned on on here, but I would recommend you turn the notifications off on your phone so that you're not getting dinged every time someone likes, comments, um, messages you, whatever, because you don't want to be a slave to your phone. Um, there's a couple really amazing resources within the team page. So, of course, you know, we do a lot of celebrating. Um, this is where you'll find out, like, I posted about this getting started red call in there. Um, you know, any trainings that we have coming up. But then also in the files section, there's a recording of all of our previous um, recordings, those Tuesday night calls. There's um, scripts, like the scripts that I use to communicate with people. And these are the same. Leticia has, you know, similar stuff in her file section in the team living fit so there's all kind there's like five day clean eating um groups in here like you know posting things and all kinds of stuff so the file section is really great and then another really awesome resource is the search feature in the group so if you have a question about something um say you you know you're wondering about is shakeology safe for breastfeeding so you could type in like uh breastfeeding is that two words or one? Let me see what happens if I pull this up. Type that in and then it will put in, okay, so here's energize in breastfeeding, um, 21 day fix in breastfeeding, 
um, Shakeology and breastfeeding. And then you see that there's comments on all of them so that they, those questions might already have been answered for you. So use this search feature. And then if you can't find it, um, you can you know check your coach on an office, you can use Google, but if you can't find it, don't feel shy to make your own post and ask in here. We are all working together. It's one team, one family, and people will come and help you figure out, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I think that that's all that I had for our team page thing. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about social media. All right. Okay. So, um, there are a few things that we want you to be cautious of to not do in the beginning. And these are actually all screenshots of my Facebook when I was a brand new coach, you guys. I mean, one thing is that Ashley and I were never put in any kind of trainings. We didn't have any, you know, any guidance as of, you know, as what to do, what not to do. So basically we learned everything trial and error. Like we would try it. If it worked, it worked. If it failed, it failed. And so that's why I have a lot of no's. And these actually came from my social media. And you, if you scroll, go to my social media, you'll probably still find them there. Um, so the number one thing to just not ever do to avoid doing is to use Beachbody graphics. So Beachbody is awesome at having the graphics, you guys. But if you think about it, there's, I don't know, over 400,000 Beachbody coaches in the network. And a lot of them do use the Beachbody graphics. And so what happens is that you become white noise in the newsfeed. They don't stand out. They look salesy. They look just super salesy and no one's going to stop their scroll for them. Another thing is don't ever include a price in your picture or in your text. And the reason for that is because if someone is reading your text, if they actually stop and read your text and they see the price tag on there for, you know, $199 for the all access pass, that's all they're going to see is $199. And what are they going to think? Oh, hell no, that's too expensive because they're not going to see the value of it. So the key is to get people to privately message you so that you can start to ask questions. You can start to deep, dig deep to their, you know, what it is that they need. What do they struggle with? What has worked in the past? What hasn't worked? And we go, we're going to go over that on, you know, how to kind of layer your conversations and what things to ask for. But the more that you get to know them, the more that you investigate what they need and what they struggle with and what it would mean for them to be able to, you know, fit into that dress or fit into those jeans or look beautiful on their wedding day. Like, that's what you want to do, right? You want to get to the core of why they want to lose weight because I feel like a weight loss journey is never just about the pounds. It's, it always goes way deeper than that. It's always connected to an emotional, something emotional. And if you get them to kind of understand that, they're now going to, they will understand the value of what they're getting. And you can break it down. Like you're getting, you know, 12 months of every program ever created by Beachbody. You get 30 meals, you know, superfood nutrition. You get, you know, whatever, plugged into accountability group where we're going to help you and motivate. Like, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't explain that if all they see is a price. And so that's why it's one big no-no to never put the price in your text and never get the price right away. So if someone messages you and right away says, how much is it? We never want to give the price away. And we'll get more into that. Ashley will talk a little bit about that. And then once we plug you in the new coach training group, we get into that too, what, how to have conversations, what questions to ask, how to... Um, just dig deep and get them to open up more emotional. But so this is big no nos. Okay, so now we're gonna get into um, a few just a few examples of I can I turn this on of um, challenge group invite post. So. Um, another thing that we see sometimes whenever people, coaches are doing their, and I did it too, when they're doing their invite to a challenge group, what I used to use, like if I was going to do a T25 challenge group invite on my social media, I would use a picture of like Shanti and the T25 program. Like that again, salesy, that doesn't stop the news feed, that doesn't evoke emotion and that no one's going to stop to read that. So what you want to do is you, I mean, when people join, they join you. They can join anybody, but they come to join you. So using pictures of yourself, what was I going to say? Uh, 
Yeah, if they've been following you, like they want to see your journey. They want to see your results. They want to see your progress. So putting pictures of yourself, you know, progress pictures, again, not a perfect body, not a six pack, not your ideal weight, not your, you know, you're not at your ideal goal. You're just showing progress. You're showing in your journey. You're showing progress within your journey. This is what will stop this news feed, especially people who know you like, wow, she's really rocking that. You know, that speaks volume to people that evokes emotion. And then if you tie part of your story, you weave part of your story into the text, then you are able to evoke emotion with what, it, with, which is what you want to do instead of just using like the beach body, whatever graphics. Okay. So now Ashley is going to talk more about social media too. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I think, um, just to add a little bit onto that, um, which I think she kind of covered, but like at the end of the day, if you're sharing photos like this, then you're selling and you're not sharing, you're selling, and it's very clear that it's like beach body. when really at the end of the day, you're, you should be selling you, um, because you're the only, like, if they want Beachbody, they can go to Amazon or eBay, borrow it from a friend, they can go to beachbody.com and just order it themselves, but you're the only place that they can get you from, and so you want to personalize your post as much as possible, and what we have here are, um, I went and took, like, some screenshots of you know, the last 16 posts that we had both put up, and you can see that there's none of those kind of images. These are all very personalized. You see a lot of us in there, and um, part of this means we are not, not just beach body coaches. Like, yes, that is a part of our life, so you will see our workouts, and you will see us, you know, sweaty and um, stuff like that, but we're not just beach body coaches. We are also, like, over here, um, this is part of the, the calendar thing, but I'm also a human who's working on, oh, who's working on self-love. So you have, um, you know, some silly posts in here. I talk about my dad. I've done a few self-love soldier posts. You see my dogs in there. Um, I do beauty posts and some of those are just on my live videos where I'll share certain new beauty things that I found. Um, I give things like I'll show, you know, I found these champagne gummy bears at Starbucks. People know I love champagne. So uh, that way, when I'm sharing things that I love and they start to trust me because they've tried some of these things and I'm providing value for them and they like the content that I'm sharing. So then when I recommend my fitness thing, they trust me because I've already shared things that they've tried and they like. And now when I say, okay, I've got this fitness thing, that I can help you without help out with as well, then they're more likely to jump at that. Um, and so one of the things also is while you're not just a beach body coach, you can't also forget to invite people. So this is that right over here, that challenge group invite post, um, that we just showed you on the last example. Um, this is a challenge group invite post that Leticia has. So, and then she has the, um, a few invites here about like a free five day clean eating group. She hosted a, what is coaching like open house thing. So there are invites in there, but again, Leticia is sharing, she's known for her curly hair now. So she, and people ask her all the time about the diva curl. So this is not a fitness post. She's not getting commission from it. She's sharing something that works for her and becoming a trusted resource, just in general, a resource on things that people go to and love and trust. And um, she has humor on there. She's a Cowboys fan. That's a big thing during football season. You see every week she posts about the Cowboys fan. Um, she'll post transformations of other people and, you know, some self-love things and progress things in here as well. So you need to be thinking about more than just fitness when you're posting. You really want to become a trusted and reliable resource and become kind of an expert in a few things. And so for me, um, I think think of you know four to five things that make you you that have nothing to do with fitness and then post about those. And so for me, it's dogs. It's that I like to drink. Um, and party. I like to live a life in balance. I'm really working on like this self love soldier mission for myself and for other people. And I'm also into beauty. And so you see that captured in my posts. And for Leticia, well, one, she it does Spanish. So a lot of her posts oh, why is it doing that? are in Spanish. Um, she's known for her curly hair. She's known to be a Cowboys fan. She's also known for her now kind of moving into her fitness progress and self-love soldier kind of posts. Um, personal development, she talks about personal development a lot. So you want to have a variety of things that are not fitness related that 
make you you that can provide value for other people because you don't want it to just be the Ashley show or the Leticia show. So if you just put like a picture every single day up of you with your post-workout selfie, it's going to become light noise to them because that doesn't really provide value. But if you share other things like um, look at this product that I love or look at some of these results we got or hey, I have you know this clean eating challenge coming up and it's free just to kind of show you about my nutrition. Um, Leticia always is really good at posting funny things too. So you want to kind of think in your head, like what are four to five things that make me me outside of being a fitness coach and make sure you're posting about those too. So if you're a mom, then you should be posting about mom things and being a kid uh, or having kids. And maybe you are really into crafts. Like one of our friends, uh, Amanda Panino, she has purple hair and she's super creative and artsy and she posts about her art, you know? So whatever it is that makes you, you, and it might take a little bit of time to figure out what that is. Cause it definitely took me some time, but you will find your voice. You just don't want to be a like one dimensional, now you're a fitness coach and that's all you are. Cause you're not, you're so much more than that. Um, okay. So that is all on social media for now, but there's more to come later in other trainings. I think, um, no, I, there is more to come on other trainings, but I think that's all we talk about on this call. But now we can dive into a little bit. How do you communicate with people? Because as you start sharing your journey, you will start having people reach out to you asking what the heck it is that you're doing and why you're so happy and what's this community and how are you getting great results? All of these things. And the, the tempting thing to do, or people will comment on your photos with that, right? So the tempting thing to do is to reply back and say, and word vomit. So you show up and throw up and you tell them all the information and then you give them the cost and you send them the link and say, here you go. And that's ne you will never be successful with that because that just immediately turns into how can, what can you do for me instead of what can I do for you? So if someone were to write you and say, okay, girl, tell me about this thing that you're doing. You are looking great. And I've been looking for something. The tempting thing is like, oh, here, blah, 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 blah. here's the link. Here's how much it is. Go do it. What I want you to do is slow down and think about just asking as many questions as you can, kind of like a layer cake. So you have to build the foundation. Um, and the first thing is like, oh my gosh, hey girl, so good to hear from you. I would love to chat with you more about it. It's been an amazing uh, thing for me. Are you working on some fitness goals of your own, right? So I always try to rule of thumb think I will answer their question. I will try to do one to two sentences, maybe two to three max, and then I will always end my response to them with a question, which gives them a call to action, a reason to reply back. So then she'll say, yeah, you know, I, I feel like I've just been so busy. I tried to get to the gym and I just never can, um, you know, with all the kids, my three kids going to sports. Cool. So you found one need. You found out she has three kids and you found out she has is low on time. So that's your... Um, you know, one of your first things and you say, I, oh my gosh, I totally get it. That's why I love these at home workouts. They're only 30 minutes. I get to do them at home, you know, during nap time or whatever works for me. How's your nutrition, right? So you're asking another question. So you're answering her response. You're validating that and asking another question and, or I mean, um, whatever, like doing, just having conversation. And then you're asking another question, two to three sentences, ask a question. And you're doing that for a while to figure out what is going on in her life, what her needs are. And so think about form. You're forming someone. So you want to kind of, these are not all the things that you necessarily have to hit on, but like, this is how it's going to figure out. You're going to be able to figure out what their need is. Why do they need beach body? Because if they just say, I'm interested in this, and then you write back and you say, okay, well, here's all the information. It's 30 meals and it's, um, you know, a year long subscription to beach body on the band. It's $199. Well, $200 is a massive investment and most people are not going to jump right away and join. They're going to say, "Never mind, I'm not interested. But if you get them talking and they realize they have no time, they've tried things before that didn't work. They, they feel like they're eating healthy, but they're eating 1200 calories and always feel hungry. And then they end up binging. So you're finding out all these needs. So then you can say, girl, I got you. So you're going to talk to them about their family, their occupation, like what they do for work or whatever, um, their recreation, what keeps them busy, what do they like to do before you then give them your message. So before you then, you know, say, here's the price, here's everything, um, and then you fixed their need. But you can't fix their need if you don't know what their needs are. And so you're just having a conversation 
don't put too much pressure on it. Um, there are scripts, like I said, in both of our team pages on how to go back and forth, but just kind of keep the rule of thumb of answer their question, right? You know, validate them. Like, I totally get, I get where you're coming from. Um, people really like to feel heard. I get where they're coming from, you know, two to three sentences and then answer or and then ask a question. So your whole reply back is less, you know, it's a short paragraph. So it's not too much for them to read. You're validating them, but you're always answering with a question as your last um, sentence. So that it gives them a reason to get back to you. So I hope that makes sense. But just think about like, if you were out to lunch with a friend and she asked about a restaurant that you went to, you know, have you been to any good restaurants lately? You're not going to just like list the, yeah, we went to this thing and then tell them all about the decor and all the things on the menu and their wine list. They're going to say, oh my God, yeah, you know what? I, I had this. We went to this new restaurant. What was it called? It was Italian. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. What did you have? Right? So it's just like a regular conversation that you would have with anyone else. But for some reason, when we become coaches, we don't know how to talk to people. You're just talking. You're just talking. You're not showing up and throwing up. Okay. I always feel like we word vomit on you guys. Like we're telling you well, what we're doing right now. Don't do that to people who reach out to you. But that's because we're trying to, you know, whatever, squeeze it all in and not keep you guys on a call for hours. But anyways, um, so now the power of consistency, you guys. I will say that the saddest part of being a leader is whenever I see coaches leave my team and the only reason they left my team is not because they weren't good at this, not because they weren't rocking it. It's just because they didn't have the patience to just keep at it and be consistent in this. You guys, this business is, it's simple. It's not easy, you know, but it is simple. Like we do the vital behaviors that we're talking about, like showing up, just documenting your journey, doing personal development, reaching out to people, you know, just talking to people, staying consistent on your social media. And then, you know, doing trainings around the way, that's, that's really it. I think the hardest part of this business is having the patience. It's having the patience for it to start to grow, for your business to start to grow. And I think that's the saddest part. Since I see coaches leave that I'm like, oh, no, but you were amazing and you were doing awesome. People are impatient. So please don't be impatient. Know that this takes time. Promise yourself that you will be here one year from today. So open up your calendar and put it to February 9, 2018. You will be here. But in that year, you're going to be hustling your heart out. You're going to be applying. You're going to be coachable. You're going to be applying everything that we're telling you to apply. You're going to be doing everything in your power to grow and help change lives. And I promise you that if you do that, you will have success. You will change a bunch of lives. And the most important life that you're going to change is your life and your family's life. So, you know, why is consistency important and time? So this post right here, again, me, and it was um, June 2013. I signed up in April. So June 2013, I made this post. It's me and my husband doing P90X, which that was my soulmate program. It's the first program that I tried from Beachbody. Okay, so I have three likes on this post, you guys. One was for me. <laughs> I used to like my own posts. That was so embarrassing, but you know, that is, this is what it was. Um, and one comment, and that one comment was from a coworker, from a teacher coworker, you know, and the hard part about that was that, you know, my upline's Danielle Notoni, aka Finn Funky, and then I started to follow all these other, like, top coaches that I look up to, and you guys, I would see my posts, three likes, one for myself, womp, womp, and then I would go and see Danielle or Kim, Kim Lima at the time, or just everybody else that I really admired. And they had like, you know, hundreds of likes and hundreds of comments. They would make me feel bad. So another thing I want you guys to remember is to put your blinders on. Don't compare your day one, your chapter one, to someone's chapter 20, because you are starting right now. So it's okay to look up to coaches and follow coaches if they're going to inspire you. If you get to a point where they, their success starts to make you feel like crap, then one, you need to do more personal development, and two, maybe you need to unfollow them. Maybe you can just go check their page once in a while, because that will happen. But I just want you to remember that if this is your chapter one and everybody else who's been doing this for five, six years, you guys, they're in a way different place than you are. So it's not going to look the same. But I will show you what happens if you are consistent and you are patient and you are stick with it. So, you know, jump over three years. This post right here was on April 2016. 
and I had 183 likes and 30 comments. And you know, I know it's not all about the likes, not about the comments, but within those three years, you guys, I showed up every single day. You know, when my grandma passed away, when we were celebrating our 10 year anniversary in Punta Cana, just every single day I show up. And I post at least three times, sometimes five at the, you know, at the most or whatever. But the, the, the key is just the power of consistency, the power of just showing up every day, even on those bad days. Those are the days that you need to show up the most. And Lori uses this example. And I think it's a great example. It's like, you know, this is your business. This is my business. And it's just like if I had a Starbucks. You know, the, a, a, an owner of a Starbucks would never close his doors one day because think of all, like, you know, the money that they'll lose. But not only that, but the credibility that they will lose. Like, oh, Starbucks is closed? Like, I'm never coming here again. What if I come back and it's just going to be randomly closed? Same thing with our business. You never know that on that day that you decide to not show up because you were having a shitty day or whatever, that that's the day someone needed you. That's the day someone was going to reach out to you to join you. And so that's, you know, the power of consistency, the power of patience, the power of just giving it time, showing up every day, doing those mundane, boring things. But it's those things that's going to prepare your business, propel your business forward every single day. Day, every, and then keeping your blinders on, not comparing your chapter one to anyone's chapter 20, and just knowing that at the end of the night, if you did everything that you are told to do, your business will move forward. It's just a, time, it's just a matter of patience and a matter of time and a matter of consistency. Okay. So, you know, what now? So we mentioned in the beginning that, you know, all of this you're going to hear over and over and over again, and you are. So both Ashley and I have trainings for our new coaches. We do them a little bit differently, but they're both basically the same. It's new coach training for new coaches that we feel, and we put trainings in there that we feel that all new coaches need to know to get their feet wet, to start changing lives. So we get into you know, more social media, we get more into personal development, we just get more into everything. So that's why we said, don't worry about this. But I will say this, you guys, once you get plugged in into either follow your bliss family or to team living fit, give it your all, like truly give it your all. There's a book that I read that I really, really loved. It's um, hopefully you guys read it too. One day it's called GoPro by Eric Worre. And when I read that, it really stuck out to me. And he said something like, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, in um, network marketing businesses or any business as an entrepreneur, you will be successful because of you. And then the other, you know, on the other side too, if you fail, it will be, it will be because of you. You guys, you're going to have all the tools in front of you to either, you know, hit the ground running and just change as many lives as you can. And it all depends on you. Like, you know, if you are ready to sprint, we will sprint with you. If you want to run, we're going to run with you. If you want to walk, we will walk with you. It all depends. That's the beauty of this business. Everyone has different goals. Everyone wants different things, and that's fine. But if you are ready to sprint and just, you know, just give it your all, then we will be there, and you have all the tools. But just really give it your all. Like I said, be here a year from now. But in that year, really give it your all you know, dive deep into those trainings, show up to all the training calls, either live or recorded, the national wake up calls, any kind of like groups that we have going on, just participate and just really just give it your all, have fun and enjoy changing lives. Because once you start to get those messages of, oh my God, because of you, X, Y, and Z, or I just want to let you know that you really impacted me today, your post really, like those messages will mean the world. And so, but you won't, you know, you, so just know that in order to get there, you do have to give it your all and just show up. And if Ashley and I have been able to do it, like we're just regular people and anyone can do this as long as you have heart and you're willing to work hard and hustle and just give it your all. Okay. Um, let me see the chat. Okay. So that's it. Then we can hop into um, Q and A if anyone has any questions. Um, about anything, uh, then you can either click the chat and just type it in, or you can unmute yourself. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I kind of no offense. It's kind of towards Leticia, just because, and I don't know if you were a teacher before, but I'm a teacher, and I feel like I have, and I've only been really doing this for a week. 
Um, but when y'all said, you know, some people feel really alone and they feel like they're kind of by themselves on this, I kind of feel the opposite. I feel like very overwhelmed. I'm in like seven groups right now between um, the clean eating five day thing and a couple of like 20, 30 day things. And I feel really overwhelmed. I just don't know how to get it all in because I work seven, it's like 7.30. I'm at the school 7.30 to like six because um, I'm part of like, I'm in charge of some stuff at school. So I get home and then of course I'm married and so I have to spend time with my husband and we're redoing our house and I just feel like I, I don't know, go to sleep at 10, try to get some good night's sleep and I don't know how to get it all in, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I know I wrote down like I need to do workout and shake, which that's obvious. Um, I just don't have to post three times a day because I can't get on my phone at work, you know what I mean? So it'd be like early, early in the morning I can do my shake and my workout and then at night I just don't know what, you know what I mean? Yeah, that any yeah um, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, so you first just, you know, work, do, what I, do what you work on, you your workout and your shake and your personal development. So when I was a teacher, and I get it, we go in like a six and we get out to like seven. Yeah, we didn't know that. So what I used to do, like on the car, on the ride to school and then back, some kind of personal development, either an audio book or a podcast or some kind of replay from a national wake-up call, that's when I would get in my PD. I didn't really read a book much when I was a teacher and doing this, it was all just some kind of audio, some kind of video. And then the next thing I would say is when I would get to school, that would be my first post. As soon as I know that's early, but that's what I could do. So I would get to school and I would make my first post. And usually it was a workout post. So if you're doing your workout before you get to school, then that's your first post. The second post I would do when my kids would go to lunch, but I would already, I would already have it crafted. So the night before, I would just find like, okay, you know, it was around lunchtime, maybe like a recipe or maybe just like some kind of motivation or maybe it's my meal or a tip, but I would already have it in my notes crafted so that I can, because it's not long, it's like 20 minutes they get for lunch and boom, I would post it. And then my third post would be after the kids would get picked up before I got home, because sometimes it was like, you know, faculty meeting this and meet the teacher that and, and this and that. And then another thing I would say is just do the best that you can. Just take care of your workout, your shake, your personal development, you know, team calls. And then the rest is just, you know, and then you'll hear if you haven't already been plugged into the new coach training group, we'll teach you all about the power hour or the power half hour. And there we'll teach you like, if you only have 30 minutes, what to do in those 30 minutes and we get into that into that new coach training group because i know in the beginning it's a lot of groups a lot going on so it's like just trying to just prioritize and you'll get in a routine like i remember when i was a teacher it's like i would get to school boom post then went to lunch boom post i you know walked them out the door i had like five minutes in my classroom boom post it's it's just a matter of like getting into the routine and practice of things and then after a while you're just like a robot kind of doing okay it. okay cool i think i just need a schedule <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And we'll go, we'll get into that in that new coach training group for sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other thing I do just want to say though, um, about that is that if you want this business to become something like full, like if, if you want this to really grow, um, there is sacrifice required. I don't want to like, we, you know, I don't want to paint it uh, that it's like super easy because being an entrepreneur, the, the work we do is not hard, but it, you do have to work hard and there are sacrifices. Like I remember when I was working full time, you'll get into a groove. Like I did the same thing with Leticia. I would do my, I woke up and I made a motivational post that I usually would find the night before, like while I was going to bed, I'd go to Pinterest or something and find some inspirational quote that then that would, I would make with a selfie the next morning. Right. So I post that and then I do my workout and film it or take a picture or whatever. And I do my workout post on the way into work in the morning or once I got there. Um, sometimes on my lunch break, I would have another post up. And so sometimes like on Sundays, I would find, I would go again on Pinterest and find like recipes or funny memes or whatever. And I would find a couple of those like for every single day of the week. And then I would put out the posts and I, you can schedule them if you have a like page, but if it's on your personal page, you just save those photos down along with the text. And then you all, like when you're taking a bathroom break, which I know as teachers, you don't always get to do that. But like, if you ever have a break, um, in the day, then you just throw up the post, you know, cause you've already planned it on Sunday. And then after work you do whatever post. but I do think like there is going to be sacrifice. And so I did have to like pull something off my social agenda and I couldn't watch some TV shows and whatever. 
And like, I, and I, I always joke about this, but like everyone says how great Game of Thrones is. And I could never watch it because when I was working, um, or when I was home, my, it would be on TV, but I could never watch a show that I could only focus on that because I was sitting there and I just felt like I should be doing something. I should be building. So I would always be on Facebook messaging, doing my power hours. So I'm there with my husband while he's watching TV. Um, and I just, I can't give hundred percent of my attention to TV and that sounds really dumb, but I really would like to watch Game of Thrones. It's just something that I have to prioritize this now. And so there are going to have to be things that come off of your guys' plates and it's not always going to be fun. But having said that a year and a half in for, you know, me to have been able to leave my job, Leticia left teaching, like now we get to plan 24 hours of our day. And so it does take sacrifice in the short term to make it so that like, there's that quote, Letty, you probably know what it is better, but it's like, um, live a life that people, what is it? You know what I'm talking about? Do Something like live now or do things now that most people won't so that you can live a life later that most people won't be able to or something like that. Like if you make those sacrifices now, just remember that like long term, this is going to give you more freedom, even if you feel like you have less freedom now. So I just wanted to say that so you guys all kind of hear, you know, that sometimes it sucks, but it will be worth it. Um, okay, what apps or programs do you use to create your cool pics and photos? So I use, um, let me see what images I, I use um, like a collage, I use pick play post for collages. If you want to do the video with still sh photos or even just a couple still photos or two videos, whatever pick play post, you're able to make a collage of, you know, photos and videos together or whatever. Either way, um, for making things like pretty and fun, I use Rona Designs. It's R-H-O-N-N-A um, to put words on pictures, which I don't do a whole lot of that anymore because Facebook doesn't seem to like it, but um, Word Swag is a really fun one. And then I also use Fonto, which is P-H-O-N-T-O. Um, to edit my videos, I use Viva Video. Letty, you use um, iMovie, right? Yeah. Yeah, what other apps do you use? The same ones you do. Okay, and then on the computer, I use uh, PicMonkey which is not always, uh, yeah, she wrote that in there, pickmonkey.com. It's not um, super user-friendly at first, but I watched a few YouTube tutorials. Um, Katie Hefner uh, did, I think it's K-A-T-I-A-T-I-F. -A -A -T -I, I think that's how you say her name. She's a Beachbody coach, but she did a couple YouTube tutorials on how to um, use PickMonkey. So I watched those, and now I use, uh, if you're at your computer, um, PickMonkey a lot. But and those are the apps. Now they have a pick monkey uh, app too. But it sucks. Oh, I never tried it. Okay. Yeah, I downloaded it and it was not good. So it's not like the it's not like the website one. Um I think that's I don't use a ton of apps anymore. In the beginning I used a lot more and made my photos really busy and writing, but I learned like Facebook doesn't really like writing on photos anymore. It's interesting, you guys, like we're always learning. It's, it's, social media is always evolving. So if you go back to like six months ago, my posts were, looked different than they look now just because you see all of a sudden Facebook doesn't like that. And if you're on Snapchat, something that you learn is Facebook doesn't like Snapchat because it's a different platform. So if you put up a photo from Snapchat, Facebook sees the dimensions or if it has a filter on it or the writing from Snapchat over it, Facebook's like, I'm not showing that to anybody. So you just kind of like learn as you go what Facebook is cool with and what they won't show anybody to so or and it won't show to anybody and i just want to add really quick is you know as we're saying this like you'll learn along the way you guys i i read this quote one time I'm like oh yeah so it you know, makes so much sense it's like you know if there's something worth doing it's worth doing wrong until you learn how to do it right so with that being said, it's like, don't get so like freaked out. Like what app to use is, is Facebook going to, you know, allow this, not just, it's worth doing wrong until you figure out how to do it. I mean, look at my pictures. <laughs> there were all kinds of wrong, but you know what? That was the best I could do. And I was learning and I was willing to just put it out there and learn until I got better at it. So it's better to just, to put something out there that you're unsure of, you know, as opposed to not putting anything up. So just always remember that, like, try not to get too caught up and stress. You'll learn. You'll, you'll so learn all of this. Um, but I
but I, what, I, what I don't want is like so much information and then you feel like, oh my God, can I put this? Is this good enough? This is not, did I use too many words? Like try not to stress about that too much, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And every so often, I feel like we do on our Tuesday night team calls, we'll do social media reviews where we'll go on and review some people's pages and say, okay, here's some things you can change. Here's some feedback on it. So like social media is such a big thing. So there's more training, but it's always evolving, always changing. And all, you, I mean, you're just learning and growing with it. So like Levy said, no pressure, just, you know, you're just doing it. Um, okay. I guess that's all then. No more questions. I have a question. I have one question. Um, so I guess I don't really know where to start, but I guess, so when I first jumped in, I don't know if I like expected a whole bunch of messages or whatnot. Um, but I kind of just started posting pictures, Shakeology, like the motivational workout kind of stuff. Um, and just like nothing. And like, I mean, some comments here and there like, Oh, good job. Or like, yeah, you're a coach or whatever, but like no messages. Um, so then I was like, Oh my gosh, like no one likes me, whatever. Um, so then I kind of started going to the likes and I was like, notice people would like my, um, like beach body stuff. And so I kind of started messaging those people and being like, Oh, Hey girl, like, how are you? It's been a long time. Um, and then obviously like you guys say, like I'm getting a lot of no's. Um, but it's also the thing that I feel like I'm also just starting this journey. And so I feel like I'm in that salesman position because it's still like, I'm so new and I feel like I don't have the transformation pictures and I don't have the trans like transform yet. Um, so I guess what would your guys' advice be for like us new people who like, we're not getting the messages or we're like, we feel like we're getting the no, or like, I feel like I'm being fake kind of reaching out to these people. You want me to go? Yeah. Um, okay. So I do think that, that in the beginning it's hard because you don't really have like right now for me, I'm like, if someone doesn't want to join me, I'm, I just, am like, Oh, well that's your loss. Whereas in the beginning, if people didn't want to join me, I felt like it was my loss, but I have so much belief in what we have to offer now, like how much this company and these programs have changed my life, but also I've seen them change so many other people's lives. So my belief in it is like just rock solid, um, but you don't have that in the beginning. And so it does feel a little bit weird and foreign. And maybe like you said, like you feel like you're being salesy. Um, but you, I think if you try to change your thought to like, literally we are just having conversations. This is a relationship business. It's just talking to people there. It shouldn't be. Cause I think another question that we get a lot is like, how, I, I do my hate girl messages, but how do I transition that conversation into beach body? And my response, and it might be different than Letty's, my response is always, you don't. I never force conversations. I am just starting them. Hey girl, saw you went to Hawaii with the kids. It looked amazing. Any trips coming up for spring break, whatever. You're just talking and you're going to go back and forth. And every single message, um, you end with a question that gives them a call to action. At some point that conversation might die and it maybe never got to beach body. But what's going to happen is they're going to start watching you because Facebook will see there's an interaction there. So they'll start showing your stuff more to their newsfeed. So they'll start watching you and maybe they'll reach out later because they're into, like, what is this that you're doing? They might reach out, but if they don't, then the second time you reach out to them, when you follow back up with them and you're starting a conversation again, you can then be more direct and say, Hey girl, I just, I was, uh, I just thought of you because I'm starting this new, me and some of my girlfriends are starting this um, online accountability group, this 21 day program. And I thought of you because I know you're so busy with the kids. Um, would you be interested in learning more? Right. And because you talked to her the first time without any weird motivation and you didn't steer that you were just literally opening the door to like have a conversation again. I think that they, they trust you more. They don't feel like you're, you know, being gross or salesy because you had no ulterior motive the first time you talked. So then the second or third time you reach out, you can be more direct. Um, but they also might come to you first, but I just feel like if you are reaching out to three people a day, starting those conversations and then on the back, you know, like if you're doing that three people a day, I always have to do this math. I can never remember, but let me just do the math. Okay. Three times, say you take the weekends off. So that's, uh, 20, 20 days a month, right? Is that 20 days a month? Five times. Yeah. So three times that's 20 days a month times three. Hold on. 20 times three, but 60 people a month. You're talking to 60 people a month. And with the all access pass, you need two to say yes. You need two. So if you're reaching out to people and doing 
you know, your Hey Girl messages, there are going to be some people that have already been watching you that are interested and then it's more naturally going to get to Beachbody um, as you're sharing your journey and going to comment on it. I think what happens is people think that they're doing a lot of work because it feels so uncomfortable to, to reach out and do these messages. So it's like you feel like you're working really hard when really you're not like you're probably not talking to three new people a day because it feels so weird. But if you work the sheer numbers, you will get two people a month because this is just the people you're reaching out to. It's not the people you're following up with. It's not the people that are like, um, that you've already spoken with who have said no, that you're re-inviting. It's, it's, that's only three new people. It's not including three new friend requests you're sending a day. So just by the sheer numbers alone, you can get two people to say yes. And that means there's no pressure on any of your conversations to do anything because you're just talking, you're just opening the door. And so for me, it really helps if I take off the pressure of like, I'm not even talking to this person to invite them. I'm not even talking to them to get them to say yes, to join me in anything. I'm just opening up the door again to have communication. And that's really all that we're doing. And I think we just, we mentally put so much pressure on those conversations and we want them to go um, to beach body, but if you just say, I'm just talking, I'm just communicating, just opening this door and there's no pressure on it, it's totally fine if those conversations die because again, you're talking to a minimum of 60 people a month and that is giving you the weekends off. Um, and some people take you know work all the time. So if you really just think about the numbers, it will work out. And, and in your first month, I mean, you can call in a couple favors. Like there are some scripts also um, about how you reach out to like, people that are your good friends, where you say, I've done this thing, um, would you be interested in checking it out? It's not free, but I think you'd really like it and it would help support me a lot, right? We all have people that we could ask that of um, that we just are afraid to, but in, you know, in the beginning, sometimes you have to do that. But I don't know, that's a, I'm always very good at being long-winded, so Letty, <laughs> what, what else do you think? Yeah, I mean, everything that Ashley said, and I would just say, like, that's the part where the patience comes in and just um, the patience and the time and the consistent consistency comes in. Because if you just started doing this, this is new for your followers, you know, and there's so many, like, network marketing companies out there nowadays, too. I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, another, like, you know, MLM. It's like, so we have to build up that credibility and just show, like, you know, just show up every day, be consistent. And like Ashley said, if you're having conversations with them, you know, uh, and when you go to invite them, if you have been consistent and you've given it time, so people just need time. And something that I've learned too is like, when I started going more and more into my business, it's like a lot of times all the no's that I got in the beginning, six, nine, 12 months later, those no's would always come, like nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10, 10 times, that person that said no to me in the beginning would come back because they just needed time to get used to me being a beach body coach to get to see okay she's actually getting results with this she's not just you know bsing me like it's really working for her for them to trust me for them to connect with me it is a relationship building business and so it sometimes it takes time sometimes it takes people a few months sometimes a few years like i literally just had a coach sign up with me a few months ago she watched me from the moment i became a coach she took she it took her three years to reach out to me and and she told me she's like i've been watching you for three years but i really wanted to see if you were really gonna go like all the way with this and i've seen you grow and you know now i want to join you i'm like dude it took you three years but some people it just takes them that long so one thing that i tried i read the book called go for no it's a really good book it's a really easy read it's called go for no that book i love because it just helped me understand that no does not mean no no means not right now. And no is just an opportunity for you to just, you know, keep growing, keep bettering yourself. And those people do come back, but it's just, they just need time. And then I try to get myself in that shoe. So whenever I started following my upline, you guys, I think I followed her for like a year before I jumped into it. So you also have to remember that, like, you know, how long did it take you? Like, were you, you know, unsure? Were you uneasy? You know, were you like skeptical of this whole thing? A lot of people are, and it, it just, you know, and, and, we have to remember that. I think when we become a coach, when everyone is say yes, 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 say yes to me. And we forget that we were once skeptical and unsure and, you know, kind of weird about joining an online community group. You know, that just sounds weird to a lot of people. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Did that help? Okay. <laughs> I know it's long, but, yeah. but 
you know, want to make sure you're thoroughly answering them. But okay, guys, so we've spent an hour with you. We want to make sure you get back to your families. But thank you for joining us tonight. And make sure you do reach out to your upline and ask to be placed in the next training um, if you want to do that. And know that we are still always here to help mentor you and answer whatever questions that you have. But we're super excited to be on this journey with you and grow with you. And um, I think that's it. So we will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.